off in the news. All right. So uh, the first story we have in the news is uh, is a bit of a it's a bit of a fucked up story. Uh, rapper X X Extension. I, I I don't know how to say this dude's name, man. Um, he was shot dead. Uh, he was 20 years old. Um, I'm going to read this story here. This comes out of RollingStone.com. It says controversial rap hip hop hit maker X Extension was shot and killed on Monday in Florida. Broward Sheriff's Office confirmed he was 20 years old. Uh, TMZ first reported that the rapper's death, uh, his real name was uh, Jasse Onfroy, was reportedly leaving a motorcycle dealer in his car when a gunman opened fire, according to TMZ. Video footage circulating on the internet appeared to show Onfroy laying in his car motionless following the shooting. TMZ reports that the police received a dispatch call describing a pair of suspects who drove away after the shooting. According to a statement from the Broward County Sheriff's Office, officers investigating... Uh, and investigated a developing incident regarding a shooting located at 3671 North Dixie Highway, Deerfield Beach. Regional Communications received a call of a shooting at the above location at 3.57 p.m. An adult male victim was transported to an area hospital. The Broward County Sheriff's Office subsequently tweeted that the adult male was taken to the hospital has been pronounced dead at approximately 5.30 p.m. A representative for the rapper did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Uh... Says Extension's uh, rise began at the end of 2015 when the then 17-year-old rapper unloaded, uploaded Look At Me to SoundCloud. The song, an aggressively abrasive track that lasts just over two minutes, would become his calling card. It sounded nothing like it sounded like nothing else in hip-hop. The beat was pure noise and X's vo vocals were more screamed than rapped and catapulted him to success over the course of the next year. Uh, X's quickly became the face of SoundCloud rap, a nascent if ill-defined genre of music that sprang out of South Florida via a loosely affiliated collection of young artists that prized raw emotionality and bluntly functional songwriting over anything else. And look at me, the scene had its first hit and an Onfroy is first star. Now, um, you know, I didn't really know a whole hell of a lot about this kid, right? Um, and to be quite honest, like the only things that I did know about this dude was um, some of the more uh, unsavory, some would say despicable things that this dude had alleged, you know, was alleged to have done to uh, his girlfriend, his pregnant girlfriend. Right. That was the extent of what I knew of this kid. Like I never knew anything about his music or anything like that. I mean, I knew he was an artist, but I, you know, I wasn't inclined to go look up his shit to go listen to it or anything else. Right. And, um, you know, like I've been, you know, up and down my social media timelines, man. I've been, you know, I've, I've watched folks, you know, kind of, uh, talk about this, you know, they're relating it to like, you know, when Tupac died, right? Like I can remember when Tupac passed away and how folks felt about Pac when he died, man, there was a lot of people who were really affected by Pac's death, uh, in much the same way that they were affected by Aaliyah's death, like, you know, th these musical uh, artists, when you feel like what they're talking about, what they're singing about, how it relates to your life and where you are when you're listening to them and you know exactly where you were when they passed away and things like that. And folks were kind of relating that to, you know, their kids, right? Because now we're old enough to where our kids are old enough. They're listening to music. They got favorite artists and whatnot. And they're listening to this and they're watching their kids uh, grieve over the loss of one of their musical idols, right? Um, and the one thing about it, though, I'm, I'm like, the, it's been two years, and I kind of just wonder, like, you know, um, I, I like, for, for a second, I'm kind of wondering, like, how attached could they have gotten, or how, how, like, is it the same? You know, like, I was wondering, like, what is it the same? Like, do we have, like, we had Pac for some time. You know, we had Aaliyah for some time. We had Biggie for some time. Like, is it the same? And I don't know if it is, right? But then the other part of it that um, that I've been, I've, I've been kind of watching develop over social media is, like, folks are bending over backwards to uh, say something good about, you know, X, uh, or to, uh, you know, talk about who he could have been. Right. So there've been like, you know, um, 
you know, like rapper Jadena has come out and talked about, you know, his potential and, you know, uh, J. Cole has come out and talked, you know, giving, giving condolences and, you know, uh, Kanye has come out and, you know, talked about how talented the kid was and all these other things. And in the, I get that there's, there's like this, this sense of you don't want to talk bad about the dead, right? This is like this rule. And I don't even know where the rule came from, but there's like this social contract that we have where, you know, folks feel like they can't talk bad about the dead. Right. And it's interesting. It's interesting in how we apply that rule though. Right. Because a lot of times it it typically goes like who we like, like, who do we like? And if we don't like that person, then damn it, we get to celebrate and, and everything. When Bin Laden was 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 killed, like, yo, this nation celebrated that shit. There was parties all over the place. They were celebrating at baseball games and everything else. Folks were trying to take credit for, you know, uh, who, who killed him. You know, like Barack Obama was saying he gave the order and, you know, SEAL Team 6 was the ones who killed him. And, like, Republicans are talking about, well, it was SEAL Team 6. It wasn't Barack Obama and yada, yada, yada. Like, Yo, we, they were trying to take credit for like, yo, we, we, we killed Bin Laden. You know, nobody was mourning over the death of Bin Laden. Now you had some folks who were like, well, you know, he was still somebody's dad and somebody's uncle and somebody's husband and somebody's, you know, they were, it was still a few folks who were doing that. But by and large, man, people in America didn't give a fuck about Bin Laden. They didn't care nothing about whether or not that dude lived or died because of the actions that he did as he, as he lived. Right. The, the, the person he was as he lived was what we held him to. Right. And so, um, you know, it was, it's been interesting to kind of watch folks kind of bend over backwards with this performative empathy that we've been having. Right. We're like, you know, yeah, man, like he could have been somebody different, man. He never had a chance to change. He never had a chance to become, you know, the man who he was supposed to be. We'll never know the man he was supposed to be. We'll never know that. Because the actions that he, you know, the, the way that he com- he comported himself as an adult, as a man, the way that he comported himself as a person didn't allow for that to happen for him to some degree. Right. And I don't wish death on anybody. I also don't have to have empathy for somebody who exhibited themselves to be a trash individual while they were here. Now I'm not going to compare this kid to Osama bin Laden. However, the things that he has been accused of doing to his pregnant girlfriend makes it very hard for me, very hard for me to have much empathy and sympathy for somebody who would do the things that he's accused of doing and the evidence that it points his way. Right. So, um, I'm going to read, um, uh, this is a story here. This comes out of, uh, the root.com. And this actually was an interview that they gave with the girlfriend who was the victim, the, the alleged victim of some of his abuses while he lived. Right. So, uh, it says uh, his extensions record of abuse is no secret for as long as his singles have been popping on SoundCloud and Spotify fans have been aware of the charges levied against him, including domestic battery by strangulation, false imprisonment and aggravated battery of a pregnant woman. She was pregnant, yo. Uh, now in the new profile from the Miami new times extensions, ex-girlfriend and, and accuser Geneva Ayala has come forward with harrowing details about her time with the rapper whose real name is Jasse Dwayne Onfroy. The piece written by editorial intern Tarpley hit is comprehensive and deeply reported featuring an interview with the rapper himself who talked about his fraught relationship with his mother discloses that he's not a feminist. You're only belittled. If you want to be belittled on for tells Hill tells hit hit and insists that he's really, really nice. Right? So, here's an excerpt from that particular article. It says after a review of hundreds of pages of court documents, a two hour talk with the singer and interviews with his alleged victim, old friends, collaborators, friends, fans, and foes. What emerges is not a portrait of a supervillain. Instead, it's a grim picture of a banal, unglamorous, half likable kind of figure whom women around the world encounter every day. 
someone who isn't profoundly addled as much as pathetically insecure, obsessed with power, and incapable of following one essential directive of human conduct. It's so simple, his accuser says, just don't hit anybody. Ayala accounts a dizzying chrono uh, chronology of abuse and manipulation that began when she moved in with the rapper in late May 2016. Uh, the, f the first time he hit her, Ayala says she had been admiring a friend's new grills in a Snapchat video, an offense that caused Onfort to smash her phone to the ground and strike her across the face. Not only would he strike her again that same day, but threatened to brutalize her with a long handled barbecue fork or a wire barbecue brush. Onfort made her pick which one. Uh, Ayala told the New Times that Onfroy's favorite thing was to backhand her across the mouth because the welts appeared on the inside of her lips. She also recounts emotional abuse and manipulation, saying Onfroy would repeatedly threaten suicide. In one instance, he filled a bathtub, dangled a microwave over the bathwater, and threatened to drop it. As in common, as is common with abuse cases, Ayala's offenses were minor. Uh, according to one witness, Onfroy once beat Ayala because she had once laughed at one of his producer's jokes. Uh, the witnesses also make clear that the abuse was no secret among his uh, among his circle. It was very clear that Anfro was avoiding her face. Tayala Lee says he was hitting her under the chin, on her back, on her ribs. Her, uh, they were all bruised up. All the boys around him, they witnessed that shit, she says. I just can't sit here and hear a girl screaming in the next room, her vo voice gurgling because she's being held underwater. Ayala's breaking point came months later on October 2016 when Onfor savagely beat a pregnant Ayala so badly that she lost some of her vision. After the beating, Onfor took her phone and left her in his manager's back room for two days. The rapper has received additional security in light of the Me Too movement, though much of the, controversy, uh, the conversation around him is focused on the lack of public repercussions for his actions. Onfor landed a highly coveted spot on XXL's 2017 freshman class, with editor-in-chief Vanessa Statton confiding on The Breakfast Club that it was a landslide. he was a landslide pick for the number one spot, right? So let's think about this for a second. Everybody around this kid, and I'm calling him kid because he was 20 years old, right? And when I was 20 years old, I did some stupid shit. Never nothing to this degree, but I did some stupid shit. A lot of us did some dumb shit when we were 20 years old. Never to that degree, though. But think about this. Everybody around this dude knew what the fuck was going on with him. Right? It wasn't a secret. It wasn't a secret to J. Cole. It wasn't a secret to Jadena. Uh, it wasn't a secret to Kanye. It wasn't a secret to any of these folks. Everybody knew what was going on here. I didn't even, I'm not even familiar with this kid's work, but I knew this shit about him right so there were no repercussions to be had for him like there was really no incentive for this kid to change his behavior if everybody around him is allowing him to continue to behave in that way and yet they still offer him a record deal uh offer him uh the, the number one spot on the double xl freshman 2017 class like you're, he's being rewarded despite all of these things happening around him, right? And so that doesn't that does nothing but embolden someone like that to continue to act out in that way. Like, yo, if I'm like, what is it? What does it take, right? We see this with Donald Trump a lot of times, right? Donald Trump keeps doing more and more egregious shit, and it's like, okay, what does it take? We well, all figure out that, like, yo, we can't keep letting this shit go on, right? So. You know, like that, that's, it's a really long article and I will have the link available on the com, So you guys can check that article out for yourself. But for me, it's hard for me to have empathy for someone who would do that. And then they meet the, and then they meet this fate. Right now, again, like, you know, we, 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 Folks have been talking about, well, he didn't have the, the chance to become the, the person he was supposed to be. That's a real rosy outlook. There's no guarantee that had he lived longer than this weekend, there's no guarantee that he'd have been any different than what he's shown us in the 20 years that he was here. There's no guarantee of that. We would like to believe that folks change, but sometimes folks don't. Sometimes folks don't meet you, you know, they, they don't, they don't hit that, that, that evolve button. Sometimes folks ain't even interested in being any different. You know, people that are saying, you know, people, some of, you know, some of my listeners are a little bit older. Some of my listeners are about 35, 40 years old. You know, people who are actually, who are actually the same way that they were when you went to school with them. Ain't nothing changed about them. 
they still in the they still in the same neighborhood. They still doing some of the same shit. They still hanging in the same neighborhood. Still going to the same store. Still drinking the same beer. Ain't did shit different since 1997. They still doing that. And it's not that they didn't have opportunities to change. It's just like some people just don't want to. They're comfortable where they are. They're comfortable being who they are. And if the industry is making it comfortable for him to be who he is, what incentive did he have to change anything about him? What? And so, like, there's this performative empathy that folks are doing, man. We're like, yo, man, you know, you, you're not supposed to celebrate somebody dying, man. Yada, yada. Like, yo, man, yo, we when, when Justice Alito died, yo, I... I was kind of happy about it considering some of the uh the supreme court decisions that came down because of him i was kind of happy about it when donald trump kicks the can yo it might be a party at my house real talk like there are certain people who show you that they are trash individuals who mean you and the and the people around them harm every day there is nothing wrong with not being with not being sad about them passing on. Them passing away doesn't erase the bullshit that they did while they were alive. Yeah, and there's this whole thing where, like, you can't, you know, they're not here to defend themselves and, you know, that whole thing, like, okay. But we know this. We've seen the results of this. There are pictures about, there, there are pictures of this man's girlfriend with her eyes all swollen and, and beaten shut. I don't want to show those pictures here for what you can look those up if you really want to see them. But I think we are like, it, there's a bit of this, there's, there's this thing where like folks are like, it's, I want to say it's almost like a mental gymnastics sort of thing, right? Where, you know, folks are trying to sort of come off as holier than thou in the sense that, yo, you're not supposed to talk bad about this person. You're not supposed to celebrate this person's death. You're not supposed to, uh, you know, you don't know what this person could have been and all these things. And at the same time, it's as if they want to either disengage or um, what do we call it? Um, just simply not acknowledge who he showed us he was for the sake of that argument. Meanwhile, those of us who were just like, yo, man, like, this is what it is for me. I'm not about to put on any fucking fronts about how I thought about this person. This is what I thought about them when they were alive is not changing because they're dead. Like, they want you to feel bad for feeling the way you felt about that person now that that person is dead, despite what you know about them. And it's just weird, man, like to, to watch this happen, man. Like, and I get it, man. Some of y'all like, you know, you got kids and your kids maybe broke up about it. And maybe this is, this is the time to have a conversation about what it means to be a decent individual, what it means to be a good person, what it means to put your best foot forward when it comes to how you deal with people and in life, not to be a shit individual and to treat people with respect and to treat people with empathy and to treat people the way that you want to be treated. To not put your hands on your pregnant girlfriend, to not beat your pregnant girlfriend damn near to death, to not threaten to or, or, or to sodomize her with barbecue tools. Right? We can do that. But that doesn't mean that we have to negate how people are actually feeling about this person and the person that they showed themselves to be as they lived. Yeah, Malcolm X became Malcolm X. But that doesn't mean that Extension would have became Malcolm X either. It doesn't mean that's what it was going to happen. He could have very well continued to be exactly who he showed him to be himself to be the time he's been alive. So while I do not celebrate his death, I don't feel any I don't, I'm my, like my empathy meter on this one is right. And then there was another story uh, about this man, uh, another interesting twist to this and that, um, his girlfriend, right. His girlfriend, after she found out that he passed, is kind of broken up about this. So I'm going to read this story. This comes out of variety.com. It says 24 hours after the rapper was fatally shot Monday in Florida. 
excuse me, a representative for the Broward County Sheriff Department told Variety that there were no updates regarding suspects or a motive for the murder, and the investigation is ongoing. According to police, uh, the rapper was leaving uh, Riva Motorsports in Deerfield Beach, Florida, shortly before 4 p.m. when he was approached by two armed suspects. At least one of the suspects shot him, and they both fled in an SUV. Uh, while police said the incident was a possible robbery, the assailants were seen removing a bag from the rapper's car after the shooting. Onfro had merely allegations of violent crime in the past, including most infamously the, an alleged assault on his pregnant girlfriend, Geneva Ayala. Those allegations have resulted in many strong opinions posted online in the wake of the rapper's death, which she, tra which she addressed in a tweet early Tuesday. Rather than feeling happy or relieved by his death, as some speculated, instead she's feel, she feels broken by it. It's disgusting that people are speaking for me, she wrote. I don't care if no one cared about me however many months ago. I didn't lose my life. He did. It's permanent. I'm still here. Like, how do you think that makes me feel? Everyone expects me to be relieved or happy. No, I'm broken, right? Now, truth be told, this response by her, um, I don't even know if I'm really surprised by it, Right? We we've seen countless stories, man, of women who have stayed with abusive boyfriends or abusive husbands for fear of leaving, uh, for fear that something could happen to them, or if they're dealing with uh, Stockholm syndrome, which is a which is a thing, where she identifies with, you know, the person who abused them. You know, they identify with the person who abused them, and they they take a, they take umbrage for. Uh, with people who would attack them or uh, assail them some sort of way. And this could be, a, you know, this could be, could be uh, an instance of that. I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist. But it's not as if this is unprecedented for this sort of, you know, these sort of statements to happen. You know, um, I, I know a lot of folks who would feel like, you know, she should feel better that this dude is gone and now she can't be hurt anymore. I don't know if she's still pregnant or not. I don't know if he, she was still like pregnant with his child. However, uh, that child is going to grow up without their, you know, without their father. If that child was uh, still, if she ever had the baby or, or not, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but at the same time, considering how abusive he had shown himself to be towards her, it probably would have been a good idea for him not to be around a child. You know? Like, you know, you respect, you can respect the way that she feels about him. Like you can respect that. Like, because those are her feelings. That's how she feels about it. But that doesn't mean you have to agree. Right. And I know a lot of folks, especially like, you know, people who, uh, kind of like cape for domestic abusers and shit are like, well, shit, how you, ma how you more mad than she is about the shit. She was the one getting the ass whooping. You the one that's like, yo man, like. If you're consistent in what you're talking about, if you're consistent in how you feel about these things, then like, yo, whether she is uh, in his corner or not, what happened to her is wrong, period. And it should never happen to anybody, period. And I will continue to reiterate that point, period. Right? So, um, yeah, man, it's it's been kind of wild like kind of watching this story kind of play itself out over social media and watching people you know talk about this and you know kind of watching some of the performative empathy that i've seen a lot man i've seen a lot of it i don't know if you know i don't know how genuine a lot of it is but i think to a certain degree because of that social contract that we have where we're not supposed to speak ill of the dead so to speak um folks are looking for something good to say because they feel obligated to do so and you don't have to you really don't but uh, yeah, that's going on, man. Uh, another story that's going on.